In the chronicles of ancient Egypt's history, Akhenaten emerges as one of the most enigmatic and transformative pharaohs to have ever graced the throne. His reign was characterized by audacious policies, sweeping religious reforms and societal changes that sent shockwaves through the Egyptian state. This tumultuous period stands as a pivotal moment in ancient Egyptian history, contributing to a gradual decline that proved insurmountable for his successors. At the dawn of Akhenaten's rule, his family had held power for nearly two centuries, overseeing a sprawling empire that extended its dominion into regions like Palestine, Phoenicia, and Nubia. A century earlier, Pharaoh Thutmose III had expanded Egypt's influence, establishing a formidable military priesthood that held sway over the empire. The epicenter of this dominion was the god Amun of Thebes, whose priests had amassed immense power and influence. Egypt, during this epoch, exuded imperial elegance, opulence, and an air of self-assuredness. The nation projected its might abroad, with soldiers and officials stationed in foreign lands. This influx of foreigners brought with them novel customs and ideas, further shaping the evolving Egypt. It was within this dynamic milieu that Akhenaten, the young prince and future king, came of age. Originally known as Amenhotep IV, Akhenaten was the son of Pharaoh Amenhotep III, who presided over a period of unparalleled prosperity in ancient Egypt from approximately 1388 to 1351 BC. Under Amenhotep III's rule, Egyptian culture, art, architecture, and international influence reached unprecedented heights. Akhenaten grew up in an era of relative peace, abundance, and prosperity, shielded from the hardships that might have prepared him for the challenges of leadership. This idyllic upbringing undoubtedly played a role in shaping his controversial decisions. Upon the demise of his father and older brother, Thutmose, Akhenaten ascended to the illustrious throne as the tenth pharaoh of the revered 18th dynasty. It was during his fifth year of rule that he boldly adopted the name Akhenaten, which when translated signifies successful for the Aten. This audacious ruler is renowned for his audacious transformation of the age-old ancient Egyptian polytheistic religion. Initially, Akhenaten dutifully adhered to the religious practices established by his esteemed father. However, a profound change swept over him in the fifth year of his reign, as he wholeheartedly embraced the captivating cult of Aten, while simultaneously renouncing the once revered cult of Amun. It is believed by some esteemed researchers that his religious leanings were greatly influenced by none other than his own mother, the esteemed Queen Tai. Aten, depicted as a radiant sun disk with extended rays culminating in hands, symbolized the life-giving and sustaining power of the sun. Unlike the conventional gods, Aten did not reside within a concealed carved image in a dim temple chamber. Instead, Aten was openly worshipped in the glorious sunlight. During Akhenaten's era, Aten worship was not entirely novel but rather a relatively minor cult among numerous others. The dominant religious deity was the mighty god Amun, and the priests of Amun wielded substantial political and religious influence in Egypt. Astonishingly, at its zenith, the cult of Amun even possessed more land than the pharaoh himself. To consolidate his own authority and diminish the sway of the influential priests of Amun, Akhenaten proclaimed himself the living embodiment of a singular, omnipotent deity known as Aten. He outlawed traditional Egyptian religious practices, shuttered prominent temples, and suppressed the established religious order. This dramatic shift from well-established polytheism to absolute monotheism, referred to at the time as Atenism, was met with resistance and disquietude within Egyptian society. Akhenaten's actions left an indelible mark on the religious and cultural fabric of ancient Egypt, rendering him an exceedingly controversial figure in the annals of this ancient civilization. During Akhenaten's reign, Egypt's neglect of foreign relations became glaringly evident. Requests for assistance from once loyal allies were left unanswered, resulting in the gradual erosion of Egypt's empire. Akhenaten's inward-focused regime sharply contrasted with the diplomatic and military strategies employed by his predecessors, such as Queen Hatshepsut and Tuthmosis III. Akhenaten's lack of attention to foreign policy ultimately weakened Egypt's position on the international stage. While there is some evidence suggesting that Akhenaten did address state affairs when they personally interested him, 
His reign was predominantly characterized by a disengagement with matters beyond the walls of his palace at Akitaten. This inward focus had dire consequences for Egypt's foreign relations and its vassal states. During Akhenaten's transformative Yaten reign in ancient Egypt, a series of profound societal changes unfolded, leaving an indelible impact on the culture and art of the time. Among these changes, the establishment of a new capital city called Akhetaten, known today as Amarna, stands as one of the most significant. This city marked the beginning of the Amarna period, which was defined by unprecedented shifts in Egyptian society and culture. Akhetaten was a city adorned with spacious villas, lush trees, serene pools, and vibrant gardens. Akhenaten actively encouraged artistic innovation and realism, leading to the emergence of an eccentric new style of painting on the walls of temples and houses. Noteworthy works from this period include colossal statues of Akhenaten himself, captivating paintings from his residence, the iconic bust of Queen Nefertiti, and that of his mother, Queen Tai. These artworks deviated from the traditional flattering depictions of royalty, instead revealing the imperfections and humanity of the royal family. The standard reliefs of ancient Egypt underwent a remarkable transformation during the reign of Akhenaten. These reliefs not only depicted new activities, but also became more intricate and crowded with elements. The portrayal of humans took on a more realistic approach, with a three-dimensional perspective and exaggerated features that gave them an almost otherworldly appearance. These depictions often showcase the sun disk of Aten, emphasizing the newfound religious focus. In addition to the reliefs, Egyptian sculptures, particularly those of Akhenaten and his wife Nefertiti, showcased radical departures from traditional representations. Their necks, faces, and skulls were elongated, their chins prominent, their lips large, and various body parts exaggerated. Numerous explanations have been put forth by scholars to account for these artistic changes. Some speculate that Akhenaten may have enlisted the talents of foreign artists to achieve his artistic vision. However, this theory remains unproven. Others have gone to extraordinary lengths, even suggesting an extraterrestrial influence on Akhenaten's unique portraiture. A more plausible explanation, supported by many scholars, is that these distinctive portrayals reflect genetic abnormalities and physical defects that Akhenaten may have possessed. In ancient Egypt, sibling marriages were common among pharaohs to maintain dynastic purity, which increased the risk of genetic deformities across generations. The artistic depictions of Akhenaten's appearance could, therefore, be a realistic representation of his physical condition. Various genetic conditions have been proposed, including mandibular prognathism, a prominent chin, Frulich syndrome, enlarged features, Marfan syndrome, elongated and thin features, gynecomastia, enlarged breasts in men, craniosynostosis, skull deformities, sagittal craniosynostosis syndrome, aromatase excess syndrome, Klinfelter syndrome, and more. Mental disabilities, such as schizophrenia and egomania, have also been considered as potential afflictions. Examining the successors of Akhenaten, particularly his likely son Tutankhamun, offers us a fascinating glimpse into the past. Tutankhamun's genetic disorders and physical disabilities, including a deformed left foot, hint at a troubling pattern of hereditary congenital defects within the royal lineage. Modern forensic reconstructions of Tutankhamun's remains further strengthen the theory that generations of inbreeding led to these genetic deformities. The exact reasons behind Akhenaten's radical changes during his reign continue to be a subject of intense debate. Some argue that he introduced these changes for political purposes, while others speculate that his physical and mental disorders, combined with an unwavering obsession with the sun deity Aten, may have heavily influenced his actions. Following Akhenaten's reign, he was briefly succeeded by Smenkikari, and then by his son Tutankhaten, who later changed his name to Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun boldly rejected the Aten religion and embraced the traditional god Amun, effectively restoring Egypt to its cherished values. Akhenaten's memory was systematically erased, with the abandonment of the city of Akhetaten and the return of Egypt's capital to Thebes. Horemheb later demolished the city, and Ramesses II ingeniously repurposed its stone blocks for construction in nearby Hermopolis. Akhenaten's reign stands as a monumental intellectual and philosophical revolution. 
Despite his immense wealth and power, the deeply religious Egyptians were simply not prepared to forsake their ancient traditions for such radical changes. It would take centuries until the Christian era for Egypt to finally transition to monotheism and embrace a single universal deity.